Fox Sports. Tonight from Kansas City and Kauffman Stadium, it's game two of this three-game series between the Texas Rangers and the Kansas City Royals. Hi, everybody. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you. The Royals' Will Smith will make his seventh Major League start against a very good offense. The Texas Rangers have hit 126 home runs this year, and they have loaded their lineup against the lefty. Seven of their nine hitters will hit from the right side. I'll say. But look, you don't make it to the World Series in consecutive years if you're the Texas Rangers with just good pitching and defense. you got to score runs. you got to have sluggers in the middle of your lineup. And, man, I'm going to tell you what, Beltre, Hamilton, Cruz, these guys can absolutely throw up some runs and one swing of the bat. So Will Smith, keep it all down. He does have a very good curveball. We saw it against the Angels. We saw it against the Mariners. And he'll need it again as he takes on the Texas Rangers at the Gay tonight. students win and by your Kansas City Chevy dealers the official vehicle of the Kansas City Royals when we come back Joel will talk about the Royals coaching change
base running coach for the last year and a half for the Kansas City Royals and a coordinator in the minor leagues prior to that. And the Royals making a coaching change today, removing Doug Sisson from his job and replacing him with former first base coach Rusty Kuntz. Manager Ned Yost saying that a change was needed. Rusty was down in AAA. He's a special assistant to general manager Dayton Moore. Had been in Omaha doing some work with the Storm Chasers. Got the call this morning and is back. And so we will see Rusty Kuntz on the sidelines here this evening. Royals and Rangers coming up next from Kauffman Stadium. Uh, graphic. That's fine. Doesn't matter. I'm Warner Cable, the official TV, internet, and home phone provider of the Kansas City Royals. Welcome to Kauffman Stadium, and there is Rusty Kuntz, who is the new first base outfield and base running coach. He was the special assistant to general manager Dayton Moore, who called him up and said, we'd like to have you come back to KC. As Doug Sisson was let go, they, Ned Dios told us the team simply needed a change, and now they take on a Texas team that is number one in batting at 278 and run score with 538. That guy, Ian Kinsler, is second in the American League with 77 runs scored. Andres Hamilton, Beltre follow him, then Cruz Young, Napoli, Murphy, and Mike Olt on the hill will be the big left hander from Noonan, Georgia, Will Smith. All right. Will Smith, he's not going to be intimidated. Time for homecoming. He's 0-2 at Coffin Stadium. He wants to show the hometown crowd he can win a game. Keep the righties off base, especially with the power. He's given up seven home runs, five to right-handed batters. Down and dirty. Keep all four pitches down in the lower quadrant of the strike zone and use that magnificent defense behind you. There's the first pitch swinging Ian Kinsler, and he rips a base hit to left field. He has been so hot the last week. That's his eighth hit in his last 15 at bats. And let's take a look at that Ford around the horn defense for KC. Okay, talked about the excitement, the energy that this, this infield has. Now the outfield, heck, there are no slouches out there either. We got a gold glover in Alex Gordon. Dyson and Kane got some pretty good running skills. But these guys in the infield, especially since Getz has been in there, has given them one of the rangiest infields in baseball. They're good. They get to a lot of them, and the balls they get to, they somehow turn them into double plays. And that is a new word that 
Webster just added to the dictionary. Rangiest. I love it. <laughs> hey, look, don't make me go to my dictionary early in this one. Well, does Ian Kinsler at first base look runnerish? Yes. The guy loves to play, and he wants the challenge of stealing a base off Salvador Perez. Will it happen? I don't think so. I talked to Kinsler before the game, and I said, "Put he got you on a three and O takeaway over there. He got you by two feet. Are you going to go again? You bet you." He says. I said, "Salvador takes pride in nailing base runners. Be careful." Got him 19 bags. One more is 20, but he's been caught seven times. He's going to feel him out a little bit. He's going to try to draw a few throws over there. That's what you do. First base runner on. See what the pitcher's got. Slide step. Fouled off by Elvis Andres, but they are going after Will Smith early in the count. They did that the other day with Bruce Chen, the Cleveland Indians did. And Will Smith, uh, he was attacking the strike zone against the Angels, against the Seattle Mariners, two quality starts. He had that terrific game against the Angels. His former team allowed just two hits and one run in seven innings. That time a high leg kick and brings the curveball in. A late beautiful. call by Tim McClellan, and that is his trademark. And Andres has struck out. Well, why wouldn't he? That's a good pitch right there. That ball covered home plate. And if he swings at that, he's going to double down the left field line. Well, you never know with Tim McClellan. He is a terrific umpire, but he is tough on television. For us broadcasters, we have to wait about a beat and a half before he steps up and then very slowly draws out the right arm and says, strike one. Here's Josh Hamilton. Oh, you know that's 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 obvious up here, but where the game is played and and what we talk about, it affects the players even more because this is his 30th year, McClellan, and I played second base during his time as an umpire and being a second baseman and you're going to the bag on a three and two count, you want to know if it's a strike or a ball. It was hard. Ooh, close play. Ted Barrett at first base made the ruling that. Kinsler was safe getting back to the bag, but that's the best move we've seen from Will Smith this year. Hey, that's the step off move. And he puts it in a perfect spot for Hosmer to tag out of Kinsler. Hamilton late with his swing fouls it off the left side. He has struck out 100 times this year. And Will more a pitch to contact guy. Smith does have 22 strikeouts in 33 and a third innings this year. Well, Hamilton. See that average under 300. He he had a little bad stretch of 44 games, and he only hit a buck 86. 44 games. Boy, that that's that's not like his start. I mean, I started wondering a little bit about him, and you know we all have issues. The ball players, when it comes to competing against the world's greatest pitchers, and you're having trouble, sometimes it leaks into the mental muscle, and it gets gets to you. Every hitter goes through it. He could not have had a better first two months. It was remarkable. 12 runs in the month of May. He had four in one game, was batting 404 in late May, but barely batting 200 since, and it has lowered his average to 284 with 29 home runs and 88 RBIs. Great numbers, but a very quiet last couple of months. Good pitch. A breaking ball swung on and missed by Hamilton. And Smith has back to back K's of two good hitters in Elvis Andres and Josh Hamilton. He's executing some pitches here early. That's his 10th pitch thrown, eight of them for strikes. But one thing I have noticed is the tempo is really slow. He wants to pick up that tempo a little bit if he can in between pitches. It's going to help him, help the defenders out there staying into the game. Move it right along. Keeps their focus.
He has been changing up going from a slide step to a high leg kick and it's been making it tough though Rex on El on uh, Ian Kinsler to break. Well if you're facing the Texas Rangers and you worry about one measly base runner over there you're in big trouble. They got one of the most feared middle of the orders you can ever pitch against and he needs to worry about the hitter not the runner. These hitters it don't matter and is with the. 59% humidity this afternoon ball or the winds are blowing at nine mile an hour out or right field. The Rangers feel like this is home conditions for them. The 2 0 pitch is taken for a strike. First base umpire Ted Barrett. Second base umpire Marvin Hudson Jordan Baker is the young umpire at third with Tim McClellan calling balls and strikes. Insler was thinking about going and Beltre lifts it in the air left center field. Dyson broke back now moves over to left center and makes a nice running catch so a good bounce back after giving up a leadoff hit by Ian Kinsler. Our time and temperature is brought to you by the parking spot. It is cooled off considerably, only 88 degrees at first pitch, 510. Good crowd on hand. Here's a look at the Kansas City starting lineup Gordon, Escobar, Kane, Butler, Moustakis. Perez had three hits last night. Hosmer, Getz, and Dyson go seven, eight, and nine. And on the hill for Texas is one of their hottest pitchers, Scott Feldman, 6'6, 230. And Rex, he's 5 0 with a 2 9 1 in his last five starts. Yep, he has been on a nice little roll. One, roll. one run in 21 innings of his wins. He's been good. Now, when he is good, he's a lot like Will Smith down in the zone. Good hard sinker. He cuts his fastball a little bit, jams some righties and lefties, curveball and a changeup. Groundball guy. Gordon with a base hit last night. He had six hits in the Cleveland series. And he takes strike one. Gordon now batting 294 with six home runs. Belted his sixth two games ago in the first inning on the very first pitch he saw from the starting pitcher, Zach McAllister of Cleveland. Ground ball hit to second. Kinsler has it, and Gordon is out. Time for our Ford around the horn Texas free rangiest defense. Well, I heard from our Scrabble people that rangiest is in fact a word. So I'll continue to use it, Biz. <laughs> but they don't have a lot of range in their infield. Okay, Beltre's a little bit older, but an excellent third baseman. Now the shortstop Andrus is really good, but there's the kid they all got their eyes on, Mike Ault. 
He's from their system. Rarely in a championship season with a championship ball club do you bring up a rookie. But that's how special this kid is. You know what is also in Scrabble? A three letter word for awesome. HUD. <laughs> well, that can be debated by people. <laughs> But Escobar wants to go out there and do what he's been doing. Just slap that ball and find a hit. Feldman's going to give you something to hit for sure. The league has hit 275 off of him. 278 hits in 70 innings. So he pitches to contact. And that doesn't bother a, a, a pesky hitting Royals team one bit. They love pitchers like this. Count moves to two and two. Scott Feldman is looking to become the first major league pitcher to compile a six game win streak following a season opening losing streak of six or more games. Escobar swings and misses and he is out number two. Since when Fizz? not the one and only what. No since 1983 when Doyle Alexander did it with the New York Yankees in the Toronto Blue Jays. He started 0 and 8 and then won his next seven. And this is Scott Feldman's last three games. Really strong. Sunday against the Chicago White Sox with an outstanding performance. And that was after he was named the Texas Rangers pitcher for the month of July. He had three of their nine wins. He's a veteran pitcher. And coming up this year, he wasn't sure if he was going to relieve, if he was going to start. In the air, right side. Under it is Nelson Cruz. He makes the catch very quickly. The, the Royals are retired by Scott Feldman. Royals, if you want to be involved in a great January and have a lot of fun, how about the Royals Fantasy Camp? It's in Surprise, Arizona from January 14th through the 18th. You can either go online at Royals.com or call 1 816 504 You can get all the information you want. That's a great time. Wives, you want something to give your husband for a Father's Day, Christmas present, any kind of present. Send him off to camp with some real big league Royals. He'll love it. It'll be the best present you ever give him. They'll they'll give your husband the complete baseball experience. Clubhouse, dressing in a big league uniform, eating big league food. Great gift. How can I miss you when you won't go away? Staying well hydrated. There's a lot of interesting fun stuff. 
Texas has one hit. It is by Ian Kinsler. He was left stranded. Now Nelson Cruz, big time power. He swings and misses at a fastball thrown by Will Smith. Nelson Cruz, he's on one of those hot streaks. Overall, with 17 home runs, but he is homered in six of his last 12 and sends that one out of play right side. And Rex, the wind is crossing from the left field foul pole towards the right about 12 to 15 miles an hour. I just checked with our team meteorologist, Denny Matthews, and he said if Cruz has the power to hit it to right center, which he does, that wind's going to help him. Just that last ball that Lorenzo Kane hit to right field. That that carried Cruz all the way to the track. Didn't look like he was hit that hard. So there is a little bit of a current up there. And he's taking a shot at right field, and that's rather deep. Kane is back at the track and pulls it down. Nelson, the last three swings, Rex, very intelligent hitter. He sees the win, and he was trying to take Smith to right field. Well, the power he's got, he can turn the teeth of a hurricane wind around. He's got big time power, but they like to stay in the middle of the field with their long ball. Now Smith to face Michael Young. You might imagine for a guy like Will Smith, his first three starts would be a little bit nervous, and they were rugged. His first start was at Yankee Stadium, had an ERA of nine. First three, last three have really been good, and there's a grounder to short. Escobar has it. Two outs. And everybody talks Rex about his cool mound demeanor. Yeah, no, he, he looks like he belongs. And that's the positive body language he sends off to his opponents. But mainly for him, it's confidence. And at, when you ask him about facing a team like Texas, he says, really, it's nothing different. You still got a game plan. You got to execute your pitches against them. Might have a few bigger names in there in their lineup. But really, it doesn't change anything for me. I've got to execute and locate my pitches. Those are good quotes from a young rookie. Steve Kurtenbach just gave us a, a look at Dave Island, the pitching coach. What does he tell you about what he likes about the mental side of Will Smith? Well, he continues to help him, tutor him, like all Royals coaches do with their players. And he's working on glove side command. And what that means is his glove side on his right arm has got to keep that ball moving down away from left handers and in on righties. He's got to command the fastball on both sides of the plate. And go up and down. But you can't get left handers out consistently he says without a down and away pitch consistently. Got to keep them from the lefties down and away righties down and in. It rolls them over. They hit the ball on the ground. He has a three one count on a powerful hitter Mike Napoli. This guy has big time power 17 home runs this year. Ooh. Good spot. And they've also said that just like a hitter, if you pull your head as a hitter, you come off the ball and you hit a foul ball or pop it up. And as a pitcher, if you pull your head, you open up the front side and you leave fastballs up in the zone to be hit. So he wants his head to stay right on it, right on his front side. Keep the front side closed. Napoli had a terrific World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals. Seven hits and 20 at bats. A double, a pair of home runs. That is ball four, and it is the first base on balls issued by Will Smith. He showed good command in his last start, even though. The Royals would lose that game 7 6 on Sunday, did not get a decision, but did not walk a batter in six innings. Team batting average in the American League, there's the Rangers right at the top, the Royals number three. But the Texas Rangers have scored 100 more runs than Kansas City. Well, 
that's really the difference between a young team and a veteran team and Ron Washington has a lot of guys who have been to the playoffs what you don't have you don't envy you use what you do have the Royals have more speed gets will get Murphy and get out of any further trouble in the second inning we head to the bottom of number two here in KC looking for our first run. Since 1967, Verna has worked as a tax professional for H&R Block and has helped many families in Kansas City plan their futures using her financial advice and kindness. In 2011, she was nominated and received, how about this, Rex, the Missouri Outstanding Older Worker Award for her dedication and work ethic. Way to go, Verna Johnson. So and here we go to inning number two, bottom half of the second. Billy Butler will lead things off, followed by Mike Mustakis and Salvi Perez. Butler had a fantastic road trip, but a little bit quiet on this homestand. Just three hits. The Royals did win the first three games of this homestand against Cleveland, then fell last night five to three as the Royals left nine men on base. And hit into two costly double plays. This is a guy who can get you a double play because of his sinking fastball. The only guard against a good hard sinker is proper batting technique. Stay up the middle. And that's what this guy Billy Butler has. The ability to square a baseball up with his hands inside of that ball on contact. He uses the whole field. That way he's not rolling over his hands and trying to pull it. And fall right into the sinker baller's trap. He wants you to hit it on the ground to somebody. Feldman's got it going. I mean, he really is throwing a good breaking ball with a good sinking fastball, and he strikes out Billy Butler. That is his second K of the night. Six foot seven, 230 pounds. You heard me talk about the size of their pitchers yesterday, but when you're a sinker baller or any Type of pitcher when you have that type of height that gives you an advantage because of the arm angle coming down and making it a more difficult plane for a hitter to square up. Perfect bill. Now he's in his sixth season, all in the major leagues with the rain with the Rangers, and he's a veteran. And being yanked around starter, reliever, starter, that can play games on your mind. But he says. And what he's trying to do is have a better attitude, not get caught up in the rumors. When I'm going to pitch or when I'm not going to pitch, I'm just worrying about having a good time and keeping things simple. Moose pops it up, shallow center. 
Andres takes care of him. Five up, five down. Fans, just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in this evening's game brought to you by Miller Light. Why not take a drink for Salvi Perez? He had a three for four game last night. How about if he gives that ball a drink? Why not? And the beautiful fountains here at the K. That would be a far poke. It would be about 415 into left center field, but he has that power at 6'3, 240. He's got five big flies already, and he's hit 336 in 30 games this season since he's been activated from the DL. Nice production offensively. Feldman, even when he misses, he barely misses. His command has been so great of late. Remember, he was a guy who had just a miserable beginning. He was 0 and 6, a six and a half ERA. They weren't sure if they should start him or relieve him or maybe demote him. But what he has done lately, going 5 and 0 with a 2.91 and five starts. Rex, he just said it just proves how baseball is a long season. He said you've got to ignore the trade talk, the motion rumors. Right. That's what I was talking about. I, I liked his quotes. I like to read what players say, and, and sometimes that speaks volumes of really who they are and what kind of person they are, and if they're arrogant or if they're. But this guy is not arrogant. He gets it. What a fantastic human being. Rusty Coons. New face out there this year. Beltre takes care of Perez. Six up, six down for Scott Feldman. We head to the third. Venezuela have played in the big leagues this year. Two of the best on display tonight and last night. Escobar to get Andrews last night. Andrews to get Escobar. The two countrymen, a lot of respect for each other. Yeah, he's a great player. Uh, really, you know, have fun and enjoy, you know, see him play and make, you know, that many great plays. And, you know, we know him before. And, and like you say, you know, Will will give us, you know, tips and for sure, you know, I want him, you know, to become a, a great short star, to become a better player. And, you know, it's always fun, actually. You know, we're from the same hometown, and it's always good when you see uh, another young short star, uh, from, especially from Venezuela, you know, success uh, in the big leagues. On command right there, I'll see this Escobar with the play. And both of these guys really, really, excuse me, are big fans of each other, guys. 
that play he made last night was absolutely spectacular. Not only the athleticism, but throwing out a guy with Andrus's speed. And then, of course, Escobar the night before with the walk off in the 11th inning. He was delighted. I congratulated him yesterday. And, he, he, you know, he's his first walk off. You remember those moments. You know, what, what's interesting to me is both guys saying that they ask each other for tips. Oh, wait, you did that? Oh, maybe I could try this. What else was fascinating to me, and this wasn't really anything that we've suddenly learned, but maybe just a reminder that. Alcides is actually 20 months older than Elvis and you think about Elvis as being the more accomplished shortstop because he's been around longer and been to the playoffs but it is the older Alcides Escobar and the younger Elvis Andrews but two of the best shortstops in the game and I totally agree with you goalie but the one thing that you know they can they can share information and, and all that and that's good helping each other but one thing that Alcides is going to have to learn on his own and it's not all about him it's getting to the playoffs and the World Series. That's one thing Andrews has over Escobar's is two years on a championship caliber team. That only can you can gain that knowledge with only experience and hopefully one of these days real soon Esky and the rest of these young talented players will be able to experience their own postseason. Will Smith will now face Elvis Andrews. Been there, done it. But he hasn't done it all the way, Andrus. We talked about them being real close to a championship, and it never happened in the last two years. And, you know, they're not complacent. Nolan Ryan won't let that happen. Nolan Ryan went his early in his career with the New York Mets in 1969, was unable win a championship after that that's a shot down the line Kinsler runs well races for third Kane bangs against the wall they will hold him there and Elvis has himself a double like his fellow shortstop Escobar he utilizes the whole field he's going to hit it where it's pitched these two are very similar Look at inside out. That's a perfect swing. That's called using the whole field. Letting the ball travel deep in the strike zone. He's a a real good young professional hitter. Kane did a nice job cutting that ball off before it caromed off the wall. Else that would have scored the run. Good job by Lorenzo out there in right field. Now Will Smith must get Josh Hamilton. He was able to work him by throwing breaking ball after breaking ball. Let's see if Hamilton adjusts. It looked like Hamilton was just flailing and bailing. He was spinning, totally off balance. In his last at bat. It's like that. He's he he looks a little bit lost at times. He went through an absolutely dreadful July in the clutch. He went 0 for 20 from June July 1st. To July 29th, then got a base hit with a runner in scoring position. 0 for 20 with men in scoring position for almost one month. Low fastball, one ball, one strike. So what happens is a hitter of his caliber gets in a funk like that, and all the scouts that are and the teams that they're going to play ahead, they all see what he's swinging at, so they tell their pitchers to do the same thing until he makes some adjustments. There's that big breaking ball and sent towards the left side. Gordon and Moustakis will not be able to reach it. Hey, let's take a look at his first at bat of the afternoon. Will Smith, Josh Hamilton. Everything's away, away, away on our Fox tracks. You can see it. So, this is what Will Smith was talking about executing his game plan, keeping the ball away from him, and he got him to swing and miss. So he's got two strikes on him again. And I don't think he's going to give me anything straight. I wouldn't. Don't hang one. Like they did with Mitch Moreland last night. And he flips that one into left field. This will drive in at least one. Gordon's bringing the throw home. It's a high throw. And safe at the plate is Andrews to make it 2 nothing, Texas. Hamilton did adjust. He knew it was going to be away. 
and just flip the ball to the opposite field. Yep. So he was thinking along with us. You're going to see a breaking ball. Just shorten up my swing and throw the bat head out there. That's all he did. Now with Gordon going for Elvis Andrews at home, he missed the cutoff man. Now Hamilton technically should be at second base right now. And especially with the ball being dropped like that, and and uh, was not bit. happy with Gary Pettis. That's a shot up the middle. Four straight hits by Texas. One by Kinsler. One by Andrews. One by Hamilton, and now by Adrian Beltre. Gordon's throw was a high one. It was over the head of the cutoff man, and it would have allowed Hamilton to get to second base. And he would have scored on the base hit to center field by Beltre. Yeah, he looked like he was wasn't even looking at the ball that bounced by Salvi. I don't know what he's doing there. He was so concerned with. Headed his first base coach. I don't know what ex that exchange was all about, but regardless, when the play's still going on, you need to pay attention in advance when you can. Well, our reporter Eric Hosmer was on the scene, so maybe we can find out from Eric after the ball game. He was kind of looking away like he was not paying attention, but he heard every word. A chopper towards short. Escobar bobbles it. Now they've got a chance for a rundown. They've got a chance for a double play. Got him! One of the craziest double plays you'll ever see. An episode of Keystone Cops at the K. Wow. Take the outs any way you can. Ball play him. Now the lead or the trail runner there, Beltre knows better. You got to look up and see that the Dave Anderson had held Hamilton at third. But Getz was heads up, and they were able to get the trail runner. Okay, here's Hamilton. He's coming hard around. He picks up a third base coach, held him. So Beltre has to know that the runner ahead of him is not going. You can't run him off the base. So that caused all the difficulty there.
This was Josh Hamilton afterwards. He was not happy both with first base coach Gary Pettis and third base coach Dave Anderson. Well, tempers flare. It is the dog days of August, and there are emotions running high. Up the middle. Andrews throws out Eric Hosmer and uh, Feldman making quick work of the Royals tonight. He's faced seven. He's retired seven. It's interesting how guys get it and lose it and then get it back. Scott Feldman we told you just had a disastrous beginning 0 and 6 six and a half ERA and now he is putting the ball exactly where he wants to with great movement on his pitches. All right. So first time through teams have been getting to him but not really second time through about the same and the third time through is when you usually get to him. That's what the numbers say today. But in baseball you can throw the numbers out when it comes to day to day execution between the lines. The key of course is to get to him. <laughs> Just get him. One and one the count to Chris gets find some holes. Gets hitting 289 this season. He's faced Feldman eight times in the past, has one hit. Well, it was a tough move for Ron Washington, but he had to decide who his fifth starter would be between Roy Oswald, who has a Storied career and Scott Feldman. Look at that great breaking ball, which looked like it was going to be a strike and then broke down and in to the left handed batter. That's three strikeouts already for Scott Feldman. Okay, Dyson, the last Royal to hit first time through the order. Okay, that's nasty. He just got fooled. But you got some guys in there that can bunt. Escobar gets Dyson. You know, in a sinker ball pitcher, sometimes you have to create ways to get on base when a guy's got his good stuff. So I would expect to see Dyson to attempt at least two bunts in his four at bats today. Just try to get on base any way you can stir it up and then steal him. Strike one sinker ball pitchers are easier to bunt off of because the ball's going down even their off speed pitches go down. And you got that kind of speed you don't have to be perfect with your placement. Dyson gets a base hit and he stays hot. He had seven hits and 12 at bats in the Cleveland series and now picks up. Number eight on this homestand. Okay, if you don't bunt, slash and dash. Good piece. He waited on it. His front half got a little out front, but he's able to keep his hands back. See how he got fooled? But he slows his bat down enough just to lay it out there. Top of the order, Alex Gordon. Rounded out to second base his first time up. Yes, Dyson will be a threat to go. He has stolen 20 bases this year. And that is sixth in the American League. Mike Trout of the Angels leads with 33. And Davis of Toronto has 28. So milk a couple of his pickoff attempts over there. See what he's got. He goes. Pitch is swung on and fouled off, and Dyson would have had second base stolen. Okay, this situation is an interesting one. When you have two players that are out there hitting and running, Gordon loves a good fastball, and he'll hit it in the gap. The pitcher knows that the, the runner at first, Dyson, can steal a base, so he wants to cut down the time by throwing him a good hard fastball. That's why Gordon took a shot at that one right there. Now, those are fans with fans. <laughs> See if they can be entertained with a nice two out ribby here. Pitch out. Dyson was not going. One ball and one strike. And those are apparently the reporters for Denny Matthews Meteorological Service. And that's how he gets his wind indication of what the speed is coming from the southwest. Now, Fizz, that, that is a really brilliant idea. Look at the, look at the wind. Depends on what part of the park they're in. Dyson goes they pitch out and throw it away and Dyson races to third. Yeah, 
They'll get the meteorologist up. <laughs> and, you know, when you try to find a way to create an inning, this is what you do. We talked about it. Button slash and running. Find ways to get into the pitcher's mind without really doing any real damage with the bat. When you have speed, that's an element of your game that can win games. Stolen base. Error on the catcher. Now he's alive for a ball that we might get by Napoli. Into center field, playable for Josh Hamilton. That's the final out. The Royals threaten. They get the first base hit. They do not score. They trail the Rangers 2 0. Is Ink Student Night and Local Music Showcase. All you have to do is show your ballot student ID at the box office to get a $7 ticket. Make sure to get here early for live local music and drink specials in the outfield experience before the game. Go to Royals.com slash student night for tickets. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery with you at the K. Tim McClellan calls strike one. On the leadoff batter, Michael Young. Young, Napoli, and David Murphy here in the fourth, and it is fouled off. You know, we've talked about how powerful an offense the Rangers are, you know, and facing lefties this year, they're 18 and 15, so they have a really good mark facing left handed stars, and they have a 285 average against lefties. So they've had success this year against Southpaw. Will Smith, he's up against a an interesting offense, but he's going to need some support of his own by his offense. Shortstop Escobar. Hosmer did a great job keeping his foot on the bag because Escobar's throw kind of hooked towards the right field. Sailed a little bit on him. Haas, look at that. Using all of that frame. Keeping his toe on the bag. Now Mike Napoli, the 30 year old catcher from Hollywood, Florida. Hit 320 last year with 30 home runs and then hit two more big flies in the World Series against St. Louis. Well in his last at bat he walked for a team leading 48th time. So he does have a very good eye. He's very patient but his power is right center. It always has since he's come into the league. His first time he was a player for the Angels. His first major league game, first pitcher, Justin Verlander, a young guy at the time, Verlander. So was Napoli. And he took him deep on a breaking ball to left center. 
pretty nice start to his career as he milks another walk. Second walk he has enjoyed in the game. So Napoli at first base. The batter will be David Murphy. He grounded out his first time up. Next best eyeballer on the team as far as walks is Elvis Andrus, who has 45 base on balls. Texas beginning to turn their offense on again after they're very cold in the month of July, averaging just three and a half runs per game, but they've scored 31 runs the last three games. Murphy has been their hottest player. He has 13 hits in his last 25 at bats this week. KC wants the double play, and they are second in the majors in turning them. They have 118 double plays turned this year. The Twins lead all of baseball with 124. Foul. Murphy's in there against the lefty, probably because he's hitting 378. Against Southpaws. Now, their one position player on the Rangers who might be a little upset he was not in the lineup today. That's first baseman Mitch Moreland after hitting a big three run home run off a of left hander Maharis last night. He didn't get his name drawn today. Well, that's because Mike Olt has become their platoon guy and he's waiting on deck. He's a powerful right handed hitter. He was called up on Tuesday from Double A Frisco where he hit 28 home runs. So they have power on power in this organization. That ball is ripped off of Hosmer's heel of his glove. It rolls into right field, and Mike Napoli will make it to third on the play. This is very similar to the way the third inning started with the ground out to short, and the next four men reached. Okay, this is a tough chance. Okay, he makes those plays routinely because he's so good. But let's pick, give him the benefit of the doubt. That's a tough shot. You're having to negotiate a short hop right in front of the lip of the grass there. Ball came up on him. Look, he's good, but he, he's not perfect. That was a tough chance. Smith needs the double play. He has enticed one double play already that ended the third inning and it was a wild not traditional double play. It was hit off the glove of Escobar. He was charged with an error but he recovered to throw it to Getz who got the runner between second and third in a rundown and then gets turned and through to second base where the guy who struck the ball was trying to advance. Very untraditional six four six double play. And all swung at the first pitch in his first at bat. One of the reasons we couldn't talk about him. He's just 23 years old from New Haven, Connecticut. Big East All Star for UConn. He's got a little Michael Young batting stance going there. He does. It's Good guy to emulate. Yeah, it's kind of who he looks like a little bit. Now, when all young players come in the game, especially when they're good and especially. On a championship caliber team, like I mentioned earlier, you must be pretty special. But they say he's an excellent fielding third baseman with power. They don't talk about his power first, they talk about his fielding ability at third. This kid, Alt. High in the air, right side, Lorenzo Kane setting up. No chance. Yeah, Napoli's going to score on the sacrifice fly. Murphy does not advance as the throw goes to second base. Good at bat, though, by Mike Holt. Okay, there's that walk coming back to haunt you. It will be the third time to the order for Smith as he now faces the leadoff batter, Ian Kinsler, who is two for two. Right center field. Kane looks to have a beat on it. He does. The inning is over, but one more run comes across for Texas.
Midwest Ford dealer. By AT&T, the world's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery from Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. Texas has jumped on Will Smith for three runs in his four innings of work, and somehow the Royals must find a way of figuring out Scott Feldman. He has allowed one base run. Gerard Dyson single. He struck out Escobar back in the first swinging. Okay. Beltre is an excellent fielding third baseman, especially coming in on bunts. He's great with his bare hand and his throwing angle, but still, Escobar can bunt and he can apply pressure that way. So it all depends on what he wants to do. Count's still in his favor for one, although it's better if you're bunting for a base hit to bunt with no strikes. So then you have two more strikes to work with. If you bunt on the second strike, now you're like, okay, I got to swing the bat here. He has a lot of weapons to use offensively because he, he has very good running speed. He, he's not above average, but he's very he's close to being that way. He's, he runs good. Kinsler throws out Escobar one down. The final installment of T-shirt Tuesday is on August 14th against the athletics. The first 10,000 fans will receive the winning T-shirt from the fan design and fan vote contest presented by Champion Windows. Gates open at 5:30, so get there early. Go to royals.com slash t-shirt Tuesday or call 1 800 6 Royals for tickets. I like that logo there. You know, that's that big, beautiful, high definition scoreboard, unlike any other in baseball. It's beautiful. Got a crown on top of it. Well represented this summer with the All-Star Game here and a lot of fans and people that came from all over parts of the country and the world have never been here. They raved about the high def scoreboard and the fountains. And they also talked about every single one of the new amenities that the Royals have added in the off season. Just the way the yard looks it is a one of the best baseball parks in America. And they also found out that the Kaufman crowd loves Billy Butler and the Royals. They have passion. Kane fouls it out of play and we have a very good crowd tonight on a Saturday night. Those five o'clock starts. Concert after the game a Christian concert. Josh Hamilton will be the featured speaker the Texas Rangers outfielder. And a birthday greeting from Slugger to Hayden. Well, he knifed that pitch inside on Kane takes it. Slugger found Hayden. <laughs> Way. Fun at the yard. There's a base hit. Kane has the Royals' second hit of the game. That's a knock. Good looking hit. And knock is another word players use for a base hit. How many knocks did you get? Says saying hits, they say knocks. Good inside out swing there by Kane, who's been very productive in that three hole. Now, Billy Butler, who's had a tough time against Feldman his career, just four base hits and 19 at bats. And he skies it in the air to right field and Nelson Cruz. Two outs. But Feldman has just been enough. I mean, he has kept the Royals off balance. He ranged his fastball from 87 miles an hour up to 92 to 93. I told you what he did his first six games with an ERA almost seven and a half, and his last five have been outstanding. It's not how you start. It's how you finish as a player and teams are that way as well. That's what the game revolves around. Now that's a cliche but you know what it's the truth. No one ever asks you when the season's over. Hey how'd you start the year. 
They always ask you, how did you finish up? Mark of a true pro. Finishing strong. Well, Rex, whenever you would start out slow, they'd usually send you down. <laughs> so, unless you're a big name player with some with some good credentials, you don't hack. They'll send you back. I still marvel at the fact that you spent 10 years in the minor leagues and you still had 10 years in the big leagues. I credit a lot Which of people. 20 more years than I had at That's Pro right. Ball. Yeah, I credit a lot of people for that. You know, really, a 10 and 10 guy, there's not many of us no. in the game. So I take pride in the fact that I had a lot of help, great coaches, organizations took chances. But my wife, Jennifer, is the biggest reason that I was able to endure and get my 10 years in with support at home, taking care of everything, knowing that it was all taken care of. I could go out and do my thing for the short amount of time I had. She gets all the credit. And you know you, you bring that up but you also mentioned Rusty Koontz who's the first base coach. He credited this organization for allowing him to still stay in the organization. Here's Moustakis with a drive and Cruz will run it down. Every time we start talking about Rusty Koontz and outs reported to end the inning. What's going on HUD? Don't start a story with two outs. <laughs> Out to come up to the plate when he does, he'll see yet another familiar face. Not just Alcides Escobar, but fellow Venezuelan Salvador Perez. And he said he's known Perez since Perez was young. Perez actually played on a Little League baseball team that was organized by Elvis's stepfather. Here's the other interesting thing on Elvis Andrews. Remember, signed by the Atlanta Braves, the gentleman who signed Elvis Andrews when he was 16 years old. Dayton Moore. He said Dayton Moore came over, watched him at a practice in Venezuela when he was 16, and he said Dayton would not leave the country until he had him signed. He still today refers to him as my daddy. Says he's got a lot of love and respect for Dayton Moore. And he said also, interesting guys, that when Dayton left to come to Kansas City, he said, I had a feeling I might be traded from Atlanta because Dayton was the guy that had me there. That Joe? is great. And Dayton yeah. Moore is all about family. You and I were talking about Rusty Koontz who's the new first base coach taking over for Doug Sisson and Rusty has been the special assistant to Dayton and he said I love my job but he goes this organization is all about family because he said Dayton wanted to keep me in the organization but I wanted to have a chance to watch my son play shortstop at KU and they allowed me to work but also go to Lawrence and watch him play and he goes I didn't have a chance to see him play baseball since he was 12 years old and uh, in a, in a real game. You know, and he goes, he could not praise this organization, organization enough. No, and I was impressed with Goldie's little comments there. That's good stuff. No wonder Goldie's an Emmy winning broadcast, award winning broadcaster. Isn't, doesn't he have an Emmy? Golden? Golden? He has seven of them. Our guy Goldie. That's good stuff. 
But I'm going to tell you another thing that Rusty Coons brings besides energy and besides skills is he was a member of the 84 World Championship Detroit Tigers as a player. He played seven years in the big leagues. So having a coach on your team that's been there and done it and has a ring he can show, that's where everyone wants to go. So that's good experience to have. He has great energy as well. Always happy. Loves baseball. He's passionate about it. Escobar throws out his good buddy. How about the 1984 World Series? Rusty Coots. That's what I'm talking about. There he was. He was on that team that was a dominant ball club. Kirk Gibson was driving the bus. It's a big RBI. Speaking of Gibby, there he is. And that was my first year in the majors. And going to Tiger Stadium, the place was rocking. I was a member of the Yankees, and it, and it was not a fun place to go in and play. But that's good experience that he's, he's able to bring. Sparky Anderson told me it was the toughest managing job he ever had to do, and I said, are you kidding me? You guys got off to a 35 and 5 start. He goes, exactly. Any manager who blows a 35 and 5 start has to be the dumbest manager in the history of the game. And he goes, I don't want, didn't want to be the dumbest manager in baseball. So they won it. But they were also picked to win it the next year. And guess who knocked them out? Kansas City won the world championship over St. Louis the next season. Here's the 2 1, and Hamilton swings, and a one hopper that gets gets to, and two outs. Let's take a look at our sprint, you call it. Our wild card standings first. And this is what we're taking a look at because the surprising Oakland Athletics are tied with the Angels for the wild card spot in the American League. And you've got the Tigers a half game back. You've got the Tampa Bay Rays a half game back. And if you want to vote on who you think will win the wild card, text 432 432 and enter the keyword Royals. I still believe Detroit will overtake the White Sox for the wild for the uh, central championship. I believe the Tigers will be there with their th three really strong starters and the Rays because of their pitching. But Boston and Toronto, sorry, maybe next year. You don't think the other wild card will come out of the West, either the Rangers or the Angels? Yeah, it's possible yeah. for sure. But I'm just talking about teams that I don't think have a chance. Good bounce back inning by Will Smith. Gave up three runs in the third and fourth, and was one, two, three, and number five.
City, and he has been hitting the ball extremely well. He's been defending it well, and Salvi and Mike Mustak is celebrating here as they face Scott Feldman, who has allowed just two hits in the game, both singles. Yeah, but in order to celebrate again, they're going to have to played a few runs. Ooh, there was a home run swing by Salvi. Feldman is coming off his best game of the year. Beat the Chicago White Sox 2 nothing to avoid a sweep by the Sox over Texas. Eight innings gave up seven hits. No walks. Five strikeouts. You know when you coming in to this last inning we showed those guys doing some forearm bashing in the dugout smiles and what that told me was there's energy okay, there, there's energy with the youth that Ned Yost and the Royals have that's an extremely important commodity in this game especially in August when guys start getting tired their bodies start getting a little bit sore and Salvador Perez, Escobar, Hosmer, Moose, Gordon, there's there's energy everywhere. Salvi gets on. Eric Hosmer will come to the plate. And parents, we want you to bring your kids to the ballpark tomorrow for the Royals Kids Fest. Enjoy a fun-filled day of entertainment and activities in the outfield experience. Also, the first 5,000 kids through the gates will receive a sports necklace courtesy of KC area Chevy dealers. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. How about a big fly by Eric? Smashed a three-run home run against the Cleveland Indians. Rounded out to short his first time up. That's just, just a, a, a good A.B. here where he takes some good short swings. I'm going to be greedy. Just a nice easy swing, but the ball leaves the yard. He has 10. So are you putting a call on him? You know, it's more of a want. I don't have a gut feeling. Sometimes you do. But, you know, this guy is a good hitter. His his. I think his challenge was he had such a good rookie season hitting 293. And Rex, there's a guy who plays for the Atlanta Braves who I think is a fantastic player, Jason Hayward. Two years ago, he had a fantastic season. And then last year in his sophomore campaign, went way south. He had to make some adjustments. And Osmer's having a better year than Hayward had the entire season last year. Hayward hit 227 with 14 home runs and 42 RBIs. Here we are at the beginning of August, and Hosmer already has 42 driven in. But it's those adjustments, and I think sometimes when a rookie has a fantastic debut season, we expect him to match it or do better the next year. Well, it's because that our expectations sometimes are based on how easy these young, talented players make it look. It's hard, especially adjusting. Spring training, I think the teams that they face just threw fastballs in there. Lots of times that happens in spring. And he was unconscious in the spring. Everything Hosmer he hit, I'm thinking, man, this guy's gonna be all world. When the bell rings, they start they start in. It's for keeps. And they start and when you don't get off to a good start and you're in your first full season, sometimes that'll weigh you down. You never really quite come out of it. In this particular year, but he has such a high ceiling and he's so talented that he he'll come around. Just his glove alone. How many games has he saved with his glove? Checks a swing on one that went low. I thought he had a great quote to Bob Dutton the other day in the Kansas City Star. When Eric was talking about his struggles, and he said, I know that's not what people in Kansas City want to hear, and trust me, we're not the ones who want to be saying it, but I do think this really will help us to struggle. When guys are struggling in the future, we'll know how to get out of it quicker. There's a chopper, and it will make right field. Perez moves around second base, goes to third. Hosmer holds at first. A chop knock. Will always make it better.
top half of the ball, sinker ballers, that happens. Hitters make contact, they usually hit the top half. There's that big bounce in front of the plate. Gets Salvador Perez all the way to third base. Now with nobody out, they got something cooking. This is the greatest threat Kansas City has had in the game. They did have a two out rally in the third inning when Dyson singled, stole second. And went to third on the error by the catcher Napoli. The next batter, Gordon, fly to center. Breaking ball, ball one. Yet staring down at his third base coach Eddie Rodriguez who flashes the signs. It's a very good bunter. Feldman struck him out his first time up on a really wicked breaking ball down and in. Yeah, he's he's trying to trick him a little bit. I think Napoli went out there and said, hey, look, you know what? We got a three-run lead. And we're not facing Babe Ruth here. Let's go after him. So Obviously, they haven't looked at Chris's batting average of runners in scoring position at 351. So he's been productive when it comes to that. Runners in second base and beyond. Salvi at third with nobody out. Two speed guys going back to back in Getz, then Dyson. It'll be tough to double up unless he hits it right at somebody. Wonder if the Royals would think about sending Hosmer. Napoli does not have a great arm. Hosmer is 10 for 11 stealing bases. It's been one of the keys to the success in the Cleveland series. Well, just the fact that Feldman threw over there and, and Hosmer's in their mind, they know he can steal an occasional bases. Maybe the fact he doesn't even go, he gives Chris Getz a good fastball. He can put some good wood on here. He goes. Pitch is swung on. Picked up by Kinsler. A run will score and gets barely out at first base. Moving into scoring position is Hosmer. Casey on the board. Yeah, there was the fastball. He didn't exactly barrel it like he wanted to, but. He got something straight he could put the bat on. Rex, they have the shortstop covering on the on Hosmer instead of the second baseman. And there is another base hit for Dyson. Hosmer has to hold at third base because Murphy was playing so shallow. Gerard Dyson, man, he's seeing Feldman up in the strike zone. He's looking up and he's getting it and he's not missing it. Well, that's another ball. See, they're not going to pitch Dyson up because they want him to pop the ball up. But when he stays on top of it like that, he's going to find a lot of nice hits out there in left field with that short swing to the opposite field. His last two swings in the third, now the fifth, remind me a little of Kenny Lofton. Lofton would stay on top of that baseball and send it past the third baseman. Here is Alex Gordon. Dyson likely will be very aggressive and Feldman. Dyson wasn't buying into that. You know one of these days they're going to eliminate that move. I agree because it's deception and, and rarely have I ever seen that happen. The definition of a balk is to deceive the base runner and if fake to third and fake to first isn't about deception. I don't know what is. There's only one guy that I saw that worked that, but he did it the opposite way. Tim Burke was a closer for the Expos, and they had a play with Tim Wallach. He did, who was a third baseman, and Burkey would be in his stretch looking at the pitch. And he would step off and fake to first base and go to third and Wallach would sneak in there and they would get sleep napping runners over there at third.
Those plays are designed in spring training. And, you know, that's when you work over those things, and then all of a sudden, if it works one time for you during the season, in an opportune time, it could help win you a ball game. They are in Feldman's mind. Will he make a mistake? Dyson goes. The pitch is swung on. Kinsler knocks it down. Gordon scores, and Kansas City now within one. Hosmer scores, and Kansas City now within one of Texas. Get him any way you can. In fact, Dyson was moving on the pitch, kept him out of the double play. Feldman showing a little bit of frustration there. Well, this is one of those games, Rex, where you have to say, you know what, they're doing the little things right. The way they're advancing runners, running the bases, going first to third. Now Escobar rolling it down the line, almost hit the bag. Had it hit the bag, that would have been key because Dyson would have scored easily. Still, the Royals do score two runs in the fifth, are right back in. It's called base running confusion all caused by Beltre who wasn't looking up at the lead runner. He overran second base that gave gets an opportunity to get that final out and got him out. Now Hamilton he's held by third base coach Dave Anderson. Okay so the trail runner he's got to be able to pick that up and stop at second base. But you know what heads up by gets getting the trail runner trying to sneak into second base. Got him he's out. Steve Fiziak Rex Hudler with you and. Will Smith has pitched pretty good baseball, allowing just three runs to Texas in five. He has. You know what? Even though I'm a tempo guy, I like to see pitchers with some good rhythm out there. I kind of, I'm kind of liking how he's really thinking about before each pitch before he executes it, and he's really getting some good success with his breaking ball, like he did in his last outing. Mustakas spears it and fires and gets his man. Okay, we talked about it when the game started. You want to pitch to contact if you're a Royals pitcher for sure and keep the ball down. And you can use your allies that are out there. Good gloves everywhere, good range, good strong fundamentals. Now, Michael Young. There won't be much longer. In a few more years, there's going to be gold all over the infield if these guys. Are blessed with health. There's a base hit to left field by Michael Young. He's on for the first time. There already is some gold out there. He just picked up the ball in left field. That ends a six 
in a row streak that Will Smith had placed on the Texas Rangers are. Time Warner pitch speed comparison get downloads up to 50 megabits per second with Time Warner cable ultimate internet. It was topped out at 94 Feldman at 95. Every day on the round table on the Royals radio network. We have a hot watch where we make our choices and Rex you and I selected. Alcides Escobar would be part of two double plays. He's already been part of one. What do you say the second one right here. Napoli's last at bat he walked on four pitches but did he. Well I'm going to tell you. Tim McClellan's always been known to have a pretty tight strike zone. But man. Look at pitch Fox tracks there all four were right there. Around the plate. And Napoli has that reputation. Darn it we won't have a double play but. They will have the out recorded by. Gerard Dyson so. Two outs here in the sixth inning. Smith making a good pitch. To Napoli in enough where he couldn't get the sweet part of the bat on the baseball. Texas leads three to two. They have seven hits. The Royals have four. Batter is the red hot David Murphy. Young used to steal a lot of bases. He's at first base. He only has two and four attempts this year, and they know all about Salvi Perez. First pitch breaking ball misses. Kansas City starting pitching much better this week. They have four quality starts their last five games. After only seven their previous 27. Two balls, one strike. The Kansas City bullpen is busy as Kelvin Herrera starts to warm. Just in case Smith has trouble. Will has thrown a total of 81 pitches. He could go into the seventh. Looking Murphy right here. And that ball misses three and one. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, Will Smith is doing an outstanding job this afternoon. He can't control the umpire strike zone balls or strikes but he is staying on his plan. Look where he's putting these balls. That's where you want it. It's right on the corners. That's what Dave Island's trying to teach to this young man. To get left handed batters out consistently. You must be able to throw that pitch on the outside corner to a lefty every time and not all the time but I mean consistently. So because he's not given that pitch to him. You can't let that get to you. Exactly. That's what I like most. His composure has been outstanding. Here he is, only a seventh major league start, and he knows he's getting squeezed, but he's not letting it get to him. And that's his composure. He's a competitor. I like what he's doing. This oh. is with the fastball. <laughs> and, and he's frustrated a little. He just put his hands in the air a little right then, okay? Look at him. And he's seeing rats. But you know what? Dave Island, he can understand. But that's a good strike low in the zone that's utilized. Look at Will. See, he kind of shows a little bit of emotion there. He's only human. I'm a little bit upset out of my seat up here. But I'll get over it. And so will he, hopefully, right now before he faces this next hitter. It is Mike Olt. He's grounded out and hit a sacrifice fly. And that's the first. Sign of frustration out of this young lefty that I've seen all year in his starts. And that's okay. Able to let it go, though. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't bad. We 
remember his major league debut at Yankee Stadium. First batter he faced in his major league career, Derek Jeter. 2 and 0. Trying to gather himself as he's fallen behind the last two batters, David Murphy and Mike Holt. And Holt takes a rip but sends it out of play. Two balls and one strike. These two they have faced each other in the past in the minor leagues. And Will Smith said when he was sent down. After making his major league debut, he said, you know, I went down to AAA and I knew what I had to work on to get back to the big leagues. It was about commanding the strike zone better. Two balls, two strikes. He said, one of the keys was throwing better strikes, working the corners rather than the outside third of the plate. And that's pretty much where he's been missing. According to home plate umpire Tim McClellan, he's been putting it where he wants it. But it won't be the last time he ever gets squeezed. And that's a term used when it's a, a shrunken strike zone for the pitcher. A pitcher will say, not, and you know, it happens. They don't use, a, they don't usually use the guy's name, but they'll say, I got squeezed today. But he won't use as as an excuse in his post game comments. Hopefully he'll take a page out of Bruce Chin's book. Up the middle base hit coming around. Is Texas is Michael Young to score their fourth run. So Michael comes through. Ned Yost is going to come out and get his young left-hander. Tell you what, that's the number nine batter alt with a championship caliber offense. You can't make mistakes to any of them, one through nine. It's Moreland. If it's not alt, it's Moreland who's dangerous with ten homers in that nine hole. Kelvin Herrera comes out of the Royals bullpen. City in this series. Number nine hitter Mitch Moreland with a three run home run last night in a 5 3 victory. And in this game, Michael with a sacrifice fly and also with a base hit up the middle to knock Will Smith out of the game. Yep. That's an American League championship offensive team. 
that the Royals are facing. One through nine, that's the way it is. And it, it can be a tough adjustment for National League pitchers that come in this league. Just ask Ryan Dempster, who just joined the Rangers. And he had to face the Angels, and they shellacked him. But he kept his team in the game as they won 15 to 9. And that's important. If they, your team scores 15, you should win. Hey. <laughs> you don't get the win, but the team wins behind him. Herrera has been an outstanding strikeout pitcher. He's taking on a batter who's really been hot. Ian Kinsler has nine hits in his last 17 trips to the plate. That includes two home runs. Well, if you like a good confrontation between a great fastball hitter and a great fastball pitcher, it's right here. I'd love to see the challenge. 99 to 100 and see how he handles it. But well, he went after an 86 mile an hour breaking ball that was up in the zone. Right. It's, it was his changeup, a little bit up. He's got a nice little slider that he'll use, but mainly fastballs, and he's thrown the first two pitches to Kinsler. Changeups. There's your 99 mile an hour heat. And he called it a strike, I think. With McClellan, we can't tell. We are broadcasting from behind him, and Tim, with his right arm, will just raise it. So we're a little shielded. That ball is popped up on the infield. Escobar makes the catch. The inning is over, but Texas scores one off Will Smith. 4 2, Rangers lead. We'll take the Royals with you this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Royals out of market game live online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Visit Royals.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv baseball is everywhere. And of course, the sixth inning is our Sonic Slam inning, and our contestant is David Green from Kansas City, Kansas. The Royals hit a home run in this inning. David will win $4,500. If somehow the Royals load the bases and hit a grand slam, David will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. David, we want to give you at least $4,500. Lorenzo Kane with a base hit to right field. So Kane has two hits this afternoon. They like that approach. Both of his hits very similar to the opposite field. Staying inside of the Feldman offering.
Okay, that's a ball that you can pull that or go the other way like he just did. Because that's an elevated belt high middle of the plate fastball. Now, if you throw that to Billy Butler, he might take the ball for a drink. Billy Butler was tied up by Matt Harrison last night. First two at bats, but in his third at bat, he made some great adjustments, then got a base hit up the middle. This is his third at bat against Scott Feldman after striking out swinging and popping up to right field. I guarantee you he's saying, throw me another one of those. There's a base hit. And he was ready for it. I love how he dropped the head of that bat on that low pitch. He lifted it. If he rolls over his top hand, he hits a, an out. That's a routine ground ball to the shortstop. But the fact that his bottom hand leaves and he's able to lift it got him that knock. The wind is blowing out to right. Okay, all of a sudden, there's been a little bit of a sun coming through this overcast, cloudy day, and that could present some. Interesting obstacles for hitters to have to see the shadows on the batter's eye and the outfielders and center. Sun's out. It has been 77 at bats since Mike Moustakis' last home run. It came against the Chicago White Sox, Quintana, on July 13th. Opposite field, Murphy in, makes the catch, one out, no advance. Kansas City wants to come through in the clutch. They left nine men on base last night in their 5 3 loss. They were able to creatively come through in the fifth inning with a walk, a single, a ground out, the runners advancing, and Ned Yost sent the runners. Dyson then single. Gordon's ground out scored a man. They want to get the momentum back from Texas after the Rangers scored a run in the sixth to push your lead to two. Okay, you're right. Now last night had somebody came through with a big knock, they might have won that game if they'd have got a couple big hits with the runners in a certain situation. But look, that's when you say, well, either we weren't hitting good pitches or the pitcher was making good pitches and I'm going to say that Harrison was executing he pitched he threw down in that strike zone through some good pitches in and out of the zone. But you got to get him if you're going to win a game even against the best pitcher. Got to find some way to hit him. They almost hit Salvi Perez in the left arm. They're trying to keep Kane close by keeping Kinsler close to the bag, and then he will break back towards his usual spot at second base. Salvi goes well to the opposite field and pulls the ball to short. This is trouble. 6 4 3, inning ending double play. Ouch.
spread now with 24 KC Metro locations. Visit us online at PaneraKansas.com. And by AT&T Ubers, the new wireless receiver from AT&T Ubers. Visit att.com slash free your TV. We think possible. Wind picking up here at Kauffman Stadium. Let's now ask our AT&T trivia question. Who is the only team in the major leagues with a winning record in each of the first full four months? They have to have a winning record in every single month. Well, it's not Texas. It's not the Royals. Texas went nine and 14. Let's see. How are we supposed to know that? Well, we can figure it out. We can go with the uh, Yankees because they've got the best record in baseball or in the American League at 62 and 43. Or we could go with the Washington Nationals who have the best record in the National League at 63 and 43. Cincinnati though I'm sorry Cincinnati has the best record in the National League at 65 and 41 I was taking a look at the division leaders. Reds have been really consistent this year. Kelvin Herrera. Got Ian Kinsler on a pop up to end the sixth inning now facing Andrews. You know I'm I'm pulling for the Reds. I'm a Dusty Baker fan. And you don't know how much longer he's going to want to manage. He's been in baseball a lot of years. I'd like to see him get there. Well, with Cincinnati's success, that has to give hope to small market teams like Kansas City. There's a base hit up the middle. Because they have to, they have a less of a Local television market revenue than certainly the New York Yankees or the Philadelphia Phillies or teams in the huge markets. Yeah, but you know you can't buy a championship. Well, that's what I'm saying. Cincinnati has built it, bringing up uh, great players like Joey Votto. There's a lot of teams in the last several years in Major League Baseball that have gone worst to first. One thing Cincinnati made sure of coming into the season was that they had pitching. And they have very good starting pitching. Johnny Cueto the other day won his 14th game. They are number two in the National League in ERA. There's a ground ball. Escobar will turn it. And they got him. And HUD, our hot watch success is right on. He said Escobar would be part of two double plays. And that was his second. It's a good lead. I followed you, but you know. Hosmer again. First man, sure. Second man, quick. Hosmer took his time, made sure he made the transfer from glove to hand. Threw a dart, a nice ball to handle, which he does most every time. Osmer will be leading things off when the Royals bat in the bottom of the seventh inning. Out of play. Sun breaking through a bit. Rangers came in at 62 and 43 with a four and a half game lead on the Oakland Athletics. But the A's lost today to Toronto three to one. Six up on the Angels. Texas trying to win four in a row for the first time since the end of June. Really struggled in July, going nine and 14. But they still have a five game cushion right now in the West. So next year, that division will look a little different if when you add the Houston Astros.
Beltre works a two out walk. Rex, which American League West team do you think did better at the trade deadline? The Angels acquiring Granke, the Rangers were able to acquire Dempster, but they also got Giovanni Soto. Well, Grinky, even though he hasn't won in his two outings with the Angels, he adds a really an extra kick to the whole entire team, a pitcher of his caliber. So he's going to win his share of games down the stretch here in August and September, and he's going to give them some wins when they need them. But I think the Rangers and them have made the most new noise because for many years the Angels were dominant in that division. It was until Nolan Ryan took over and started adding and getting a better pitching staff in there where they started competing against the Angels in the last two years. They've been the champions of the West. So they want to continue that. You have to keep adding if you're going to stay up there with big spender Artie Moreno. Herrera strikes out Nelson Cruz. A shutout seventh inning. Royals need two to tie. Woo, man, that's some high cheese there. You can't catch it. Royals baseball. Jeff Montgomery is taking his turn on the Oregon. Look at that. Oh, man, I knew the he guy would. is brilliant in real estate. He owns a radio station. He's a broadcaster. He has over 300 saves. And now he is an accomplished um, organist. I didn't realize he had those kind of skills. Monty is multifaceted. He has many faucets. Unfortunately, most of them are leaky. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Here is Hosmer. And he swings sharply up the middle, but Andrus had him played perfectly and throws him out. One down. I tell you, I like watching that kid play shortstop, too. Well, it's time to take a look at our AT&T trivia question. Who is the only team in the majors with a winning record in each of the first full four months? I'm going to guess Cincinnati. And it's Washington. I just went with a division. A leader. And those Nationals have been so consistent this year. They are 63 and 43 overall. They lead the Atlanta Braves when the day began by two games. Gets pops one to right field, cruises there, and very quickly two outs in the seventh inning. The Royals fans, we want you to be sure to stop by and pick up 
your four for 44 deal at Taco Bell. This ticket package includes four Royals game tickets, four hats, and four Taco Bell combo meals, all for only $44. This deal is good for any Royals home game. You can get your tickets at participating Taco Bell locations or by going to royals.com slash Taco Bell. Gerard Dyson, two for two. You can't take your family to a movie and pay and not pay a hundred bucks for four. And you get fed forty-four dollars, four tickets, four hats, four meals. It's a pretty good deal. And what a perfect night to bring them out because 28,724 are here for this ball game and faith and family night. Dyson swings and misses and is down to the count one and two is Feldman changing his sequence on him and really got him to reach for that bender. He has been a big winner as a start in the past. He won 17 games for the Rangers in 2009. Dyson fouls that one off. He was the Rangers opening day starter in 2010. In his career he's been pretty much a 500 pitcher 38 and 39 coming into this game with an ERA of 4.75. Beltre does have room. And Feldman with a one, two, three, seven. Four to two lead, and I'm sure interested in what's going on around the league. Panera takes us around the league, and King Felix with the shutout over the Yankees in the Bronx. One nothing. Toronto wins it three to one. Cleveland trailing in Detroit that had weather there throughout the night. Los Angeles three to one early over Chicago. Mike Avilas has Boston on the board, and Baltimore early lead in Tampa. And speaking of King Felix, how about it? Nine innings, two hits for the shutout, six strikeouts. Unbelievable. Absolutely one of the best pitchers in the game. I think we've seen that move there from Rex before. That's right. And Billy Butler told me that after facing Felix Hernandez, everyone else looks like they're an A ball pitcher. Well, he really is unbelievable. Interesting in that Jays and A's game, guys, as the A's trying to keep pace in that great race in the West and the wild card that Oakland had won two games. In 15 innings this week, two times in one week, and here in the 11th inning, and they throw the ball away. Remember that it's traded Kurt Suzuki, who is now a Washington National. The Jays put up the runs in the 11th. Tough loss for Oakland. You wonder about that. Oakland 
They've got a good thing going there. I don't know why they would take away their team leader and their catcher. Mm, interesting. You know they have been on hold for so many years of where they will play. Will they be playing in Fremont or San Jose or Sacramento or Livermore? And that is a shame because Billy Bean puts a winner on the field every single year. And the A's and Rangers play each other seven times the last two weeks of the season. Quite frankly. I think it will be difficult for them to still be in it that late because of their young starting pitching. A lot of guys who haven't pitched in September before. How about doing it with a baseball low forty nine million dollar payroll. How about Kelvin Herrera striking out Michael Young now taking apart Mike Napoli. He's got three strikeouts in a row. Well he has a tremendous strikeout ability that good above average fastball. I mean that's above average at 98 99 and you that change up that he throws there. Oh what a contrast in speeds. Must keep it up against the red hot David Murphy who has singled and walked in this game. Batting over 500 the last week. The first pitch is the off speed strike one. And the reason Ned Yost stays with him is because his pitch efficiency has been so good. This is his third inning of work and he's only thrown 25 pitches. 26 there as it's fouled off. But 18 have been strikes. Eight have been out of the zone. Had several early count outs. Trying to get a guy out who's hit 383 the last two months of the season. Well, he raised the level of Nelson Cruz with a 100 mile an hour fastball to end the seventh. Would he do that here? No. Stays down with the off speed. Hosmer takes care of it. One, two, three, go the Rangers in the eighth. We'll leave things off with Gordon when we come back. Leads the Royals in on base percentage. Leads the Royals in runs scored and doubles. Leads the American League with those 37 doubles and try and start the eighth inning well for Kansas City as they trail by two. Craig Gentry comes in the game to take over in center field. That will move Josh Hamilton from center to left. And Nelson Cruz remains the right fielder. Murphy out. Yeah, Gentry, he's a guy that they put in when they have a lead late in games because he's got really exceptional 
range and center field and then that bumps Hamilton over there to left field. So that's Washington's speediest outfield. We oftentimes see the new guy who comes into the game. The ball is struck to him. Let's see if Gordon can strike one to Gentry. How about not to him? How about over his head? Okay, well that's what I'm saying to the gap. Feldman has Gordon down nothing in two. Feldman has only thrown 91 pitches. 58 have been strikes, 33 have missed. He's gotten Gordon three times. Pretty good outing for your number five starter. And they have a good rotation led by Matt Harrison, who won his 13th game last night, and you, Darvish. The young man they picked up from Japan in the offseason, Derek Holland, is back in the rotation after being on the DL for a little bit. Ryan Dempster and Feldman goes number five, and they have an option with Roy Oswalt, who's in the bullpen right now. He's been a great starter in the major leagues in the past. There is Ryan Dempster, picked up from the Chicago Cubs on Tuesday. Good guy. Talked to him today in the clubhouse. Well, they call that strike three. Time to take a look at our sprint numbers. Forty percent say the Tigers. Quite frankly, I think they are going to win the Central. That's how good they are, particularly led by Justin Verlander in a strong rotation in the middle of Fielder and Cabrera. I think they'll overtake the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox are very good, and that's who the Royals will play next as we head to Chicago for games Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But the White Sox have very young pitching, led by Chris Sale, who has been outstanding. So with young pitching, you don't know what you're going to get in September. The reason I say September is a lot of the young pitchers and position players in their first seasons full seasons don't have any idea what a extra 30 games do to you when they're used to playing a 130 game schedule. Little chopper towards third Beltre comes on and flips underhand. Old cannot hold on, so Escobar will reach, and the tying run will be coming to the plate for KC. Okay, Beltre, he makes this play look easy lots of times. Now it's a little bit low, and you can tell all the inexperience at first base. He kind of was a little bit of a frying pan hands on that one. You can see it. The ball, he, he misjudged it. Hit on the heel of his glove. It wasn't even a hopper. It, it was a, a ball that could have been caught. And Beltre was like, "Wow!" So that's definitely an error on the first baseman. That, that ball was catchable. Here is Lorenzo Kane. Escobar goes. Pitch taken. Throw by Napoli. Not even close. That's stolen base number 20 for Escobar this year. 26 last season. Okay, excellent jump. Feldman not concerned about the runner, so he has a high leg kick. Tough for a catcher to try to throw him out. Napoli's two attempts have throw have has been off the mark and pulling the fielder off the base because he's trying to rush his throw. Kane's got a couple of nice opposite field base hits off Feldman. Let's see if he can take that fastball and drive it out of here. That might have been it. Good pitch.
You know, I know Lorenzo Cain's been batting third for a while, and so he knows who's hitting behind him. You don't have to tell him. But Billy Butler, he's uh, the Royals' run-producing king. So you're saying you better be ready to swing because Feldman looking for a pitch strike right knows here. Who's on deck? Right. So this should be a good pitch to hit. Ooh. Oh, he got his pitch and he Ooh. just missed it. Feldman. Do a little wrinkle on that one, though. He knew. It. So there's a little bit of a slider there. You see that? They just missed it. Good bat speed. He's staying alive. What Lorenzo Cain needs to be telling himself right here is this guy can't get me out. I'm gonna battle him. I'm gonna get a big hit here. And that's what that's how you talk to yourself when you're in the batter's box. Feldman's saying, man, I better be a little bit careful here. I better not give him one down the middle. He's been swinging some pretty good strokes lately. Again, he came in on him. And all Lorenzo could do was foul it off. He has battled him the last three, fouling each of the last three off. Scott did hang that breaking ball that he was on, spun it right back to the screen. Texas's pen is ready. Mike Adams. Royals did solve him for a run last night. Center field. Gentry makes the catch. Escobar tags. The throw goes to third, but not in time. Two out. He just, just couldn't quite wait on that one enough. And here comes Ron Washington. He wants Adams, who has been so tough on right-handers, to face Billy Butler. As Feldman with another terrific start. Scott Feldman has thrown quality baseball his last six starts, an ERA under 2.9, and he's trying to go 6 and 0 oh in those starts if his Rangers can hang on. Our Chevy call to the bullpen. Adams in, Feldman out. He was rejected. I don't know what he is. But here is Mike Adams coming out of the bullpen to try and get Billy Butler out. 
Royals trail by two as the Rangers have four runs on nine hits. They've left seven. Kansas City with two runs on six hits. They left four. And the crowd picks up for Billy. Singled his last time up. It won't be easy. Adams has some uh, really electric fastball that darts and dives. Good sinker, cutter, slider, and an occasional changeup when he feels he needs it. Checks his swing, but it was in the strike zone. Adams has has given up just one home run this year in 35 innings coming into this appearance here and it was to a right handed batter. Out of play Butler down in the count nothing and two. The Royals were able to get to Mike Adams last night. As Perez singled off of him and bet for it doubled in a run to make it five three. This gets was the batter Kansas City had the tying runs on but gets flied out to left. One ball two strikes. Since the start of 2009, Mike Adams has the most holds in baseball, 103, and the lowest ERA at 1.66. He makes a mistake, you can't miss it. Two balls and two strikes. Okay, Napoli wanted that one up there. And you know the Rangers are talking about how they bettered their team every year. They got Adams last season from the San Diego Padres. And he's one of the best back end of a bullpen guy you can get outside of a closer. Billy Butler has gone from 0 2 to 3 and 2. Left hander Mike Moustakis is next. Got him to swing at a ball out of the strike zone. Butler strikes out, and the Royals are done in the eighth. The Rangers have erred twice, but the Royals have not been able to capitalize. And now 
Casey will bring on Jeremy Jeffries, six foot right hander from South Boston, Virginia. Former first round pick of the Milwaukee Brewers and acquired by the Royals in the Zach Granke deal, along with Escobar, who's now the starting shortstop. Jake Odorizzi, who is down in the minor leagues. And Lorenzo Kane, who is the Royals starting center fielder. Here in the ninth inning, we will see Mitch Moreland lead things off. As the ninth spot has haunted Kansas City in the first two games of the series. Moreland hit a three run home run in the seventh inning that broke open a close game yesterday. It was a 2 1 score. Two on, one out. Jose Mijares had Moreland down to the count. 0 2 had thrown him. Two great breaking balls, then three straight fastballs to try to hook him again. Hung the hook, and Moreland did not miss it. Planted it 419 feet. This is fourth, 14th pinch hit opportunity this year. He's got two hits, one of those a homer. Jeffress has an outstanding fastball that. Can reach the upper 90s. He was five and four with a 4.97 ERA for the Storm Chasers. Struck out 61 batters in 58 innings, but walked 25. And he has fallen behind Mitch Moreland. Jeffers worked the ninth inning last night and worked it quite well as he got Young, Murphy, and Soto in order. Moreland walks on four pitches, which gives us an opportunity to get to Joel Goldberg. Well, guys, it's been a good crowd here, and we're expecting a nice one out at Rivals. Boulevard Royals live after the game with Jeff Montgomery. The Royals offense shut down by Scott Feldman. We'll talk about that. And defense in play again tonight, including the very rare 6 4 6 double play and a 3 6 3 double play. Talk about the hot watch on that. Plus, preview the matchup of Derek Holland and Luke Hochaver. That coming up on Boulevard Royals Live. Congrats, guys. I won with you on those two double plays. And, Joel, I've got to ask you, as a critic, how did Monty do on the organ? There's a well, base hit to left field. He looked really good. I couldn't hear any sound. Ah, the key is the music. Right, but we were sitting here, and, and I guess they forgot to take the organ out of town, so. Um, you know, the seventh inning stretch was going. I said, Monty, why don't you play? And what I liked best about it was that little kind of look that he gave to the camera. A little smile. Like, yeah, I'm just la -di da playing my, playing my music and smile up at the camera. Just saw it up on the crowd vision, too. So Monty is now a famous organ player. Well, they say that the beautiful thing about music is the silence you hear between the notes. And in that case, Monty was fantastic because he was all about silence. Dave Island comes out for a visit with Jeremy as he's given up a walk and now a base hit to Ian Kinsler and Lewis Coleman is starting to warm up as quickly as he can. Island has had his visit. I was treading so carefully. You were? I knew. No, I, I like here's the thing is I knew that there were so many traps that I could fall into and, and knew that there was a very good chance that I would. So if you told me that I just said something ridiculous I believe it you just did Joel I don't even I have no idea <laughs> two on nobody out Jeffers needs to keep it down try and get Andrus on a double play he's going to bunt and there is strike one Mustakas was expecting that Mike was down the line about five feet just on the edge of the infield grass okay Ron Washington Got a guy up that can handle the bat. Typically, what you ask for out of a number two place batter. Can he bunt when we need him? Here it is late in the game. Their offense in there playing a little small ball with nobody out. Elvis gets the bunt down. Jeremy goes to third, and they get the out there. Whoo, man, that was a do or die. He had to be just perfect with his spin and his throw. To get the force runner at third. 
Yeah, he went ahead and made his mind up while while he was going to that ball and made a perfect play. Moose got caught up with Moreland's feet. Big out here in the ninth inning. Kansas City still in it. They're in a situation where they only need to get a man on to bring the tying run to the plate. But Jeremy Jeffers knows that he is not done yet. Only one out, two on, first and second for Josh Hamilton, who has driven in two runs in this game with a single back in the third off Will Smith. Texas won by two last night, five to three. Let's see if Jeffers can mix in his little slider down low, get him to ground one out. Kinsler at second, communicating with Andres at first base. Hosmer playing behind Elvis, so he has a huge lead there. Yeah, you know, I like that. Kinsler, the second base runner, is looking at Andrus, the first base runner, and they're they're kind of getting on the same page and maybe giving Andrus an idea if he's going to attempt to try to pull off a little double steal here with one out. Even if they're not, they're they're getting in the mind of Jeffress. Salvi wanted that call. Yeah, and, and with Salvador Perez's throwing skills, you really don't need to concern yourself with the base runners at all. Particularly with a guy like Josh at the plate who has 90 RBIs leading the American League. Yeah, and Beltre coming. Had a good rip, and Kinsler was going. But Elvis was not. Broke late. I can see Hosmer sneak in there at first base and pick him off. But you know, Eric doesn't want to give away too much ground with a pull hitting Hamilton up. See, he could just break right in there and and catch him off guard. But Andrus has a set of eyes, and that's the first base coach, Gary Pettis. Three and one. But if you look at Elvis Andrus at first base, he's not even watching the pitcher or the hitter. He's watching Kinsler. He's seeing if he takes off, he wants to go. See him? He's looking at Kinsler, the lead runner. There's Pettis. Typically what a first base coach will say is hey get a lot on your lead here. I'll let you know if he creeps in. Let's see if Ron Washington sends the runners with a three two count with one out. Hamilton is prone to the strikeout. He has caved 101 times this year. So let's Salvi take it over strike him out throw him out. They do not go and the pitch is swung on hit in the air left side playable for Gordon. Two outs. Well we could make a wish right here. Uh, how about a three run home run in the bottom of the ninth. Rainbow.
Beltre smacks it towards left center. Dyson races over and makes a diving catch. Off the bat, that looked like that might have had a chance to fall, but Dyson says, uh-uh, not on my watch. They trail four to two. Mitch Moreland stays in at first base. Alexi Ogando is the new pitcher. He picked up his second save of the season last night. Firing down the Royals in order in the ninth inning, striking out Alex Gordon, getting Escobar and a pop up to first and striking out. Lorenzo Kane. This guy has tremendous stuff, a fastball that reached 99 last night. Yeah, and he was throwing tablets up there. And that's a, another word a hitter uses for the ball that looks like a tablet when it comes up there. It's hard to, hard to see him. He's got some deception. Pretty good hard slider and a split finger to go with it. Mike Mustak is down in the count 0 and 2 and Mike battling through a 2 for 29 slide he has been in. That'll, work. That'll drop. On 0 2 Mustakis comes through in the bottom of the ninth. All right, nice easy swing. Being aggressive, good two strike approach. Pretty good location. Napoli was going to catch that ball on the ground, so good start. Now you have a right hander at the plate. Texas has done a nice job with their defense, with their pitchers pitching to the situation. They enticed the Royals to hit into two double plays last night in big situations, and they were able to get Salvi Perez to do just that to end a sixth inning threat for Kansas City. The Royals had runners on first and second with nobody out as Lorenzo Kane had singled in the sixth. Billy Butler followed with the base hit to left field, but Mike Moustakas flied out to left. No runners were able to advance, and Perez ended the threat by bouncing into a 6 4 3 inning ending double play. The 
It has been 49 at bats since Salvi's last home run. That's trouble. Cosmer the batter. Their pitchers have just done a great job in this series and throughout the year pitching to the situation when they have needed a double play. Texas has gotten it. Hosmer pops it up, lifts it foul, back and out of play. Texas with four runs on ten hits, the Royals with two runs on seven. Still life for KC, a two out knock for Eric Hosmer. All right, look, if he throws it hard, doesn't necessarily mean you need to hit it hard. It's soft. Anything to keep your hopes alive. Down two runs. Gondo and he's a nice option. And so now two days off in a row for Joe Nathan, their closer. They do have power arms in their bullpen as well with Nathan Gondo. Tanner Shepherds we saw reach the mid 90s last night. Of course, Mike Adams is sinker slider guy that works in the low 90s Nathan in that last series with the Angels they he, he threw a lot of pitches Kinsler takes care of gets and the Rangers have taken the first two games of this series by scores of five to three last night and four to two this evening Ogando gets his second save in as many nights and Ian Kinsler puts together another productive game with three more hits. The Rangers continue to rule the West as they have beaten the Royals in the first two games of this series and we'll come back and talk more about it right after this.